which is light as a wave. So just a quick uh, history lesson is that in the 1800s and the 1900s, uh, we didn't know much. much uh, we didn't know much about light, and back in the day, uh, it was assumed that light is a particle. But there was also a bit of evidence for light being a wave, and so there was lots of debates in the science community to figure out is light really a wave or is light a particle. And so some smart guy, uh, Maxwell, he decided that. Um, light is actually a wave, and he called it the electromagnetic wave, and you'll see where that name comes from. And so what he proposed was that um, light is actually, uh, light is actually, um, where is it? Light is actually the acceleration of an electric charge. So this is what he proposed a light wave to look like. So we have some electric charge. We've accelerated it, and what that happens, or what happens when we accelerate an electric charge, is going to create an electric field, right? And going back to our um, term two stuff, right? So if we have, let's say, we have a wire, we have current going that way. Um, so that's our like our electric charge is traveling upwards, right? And if electric charge is going upwards, what we can do is we can use our right hand thumb rule, and we can calculate the magnetic field that's uh, being created. So applying that same logic, right? So if uh, accelerating an electron, or uh, sorry, accelerating a charge creates an electric field, that electric field is also going to create a magnetic field, right? Uh, so yeah, we have, an we have an electric field and that electric field is going to create a magnetic field. Cool. But when you have a magnetic field, Right, going back to again unit two stuff, uh, when we had uh, the motor, uh, not the motor, we had um, the electrical generator. So we had a coil spinning around a magnetic field. But what that did, that created an electric field, or uh, that created a current or an electric field. And what we said before was that electric field is creating a magnetic field, and this magnetic field is creating an electric field. And this cycle just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And because of this, we call light, uh, Maxwell called light. A self-propagating or self-sustaining wave. So essentially, this wave can a light wave can travel forever. Ooh, forever. Because it doesn't really need its um, source of energy. Um, you can't say the same about a water wave, right? So if you have a water wave, the wave is going to die out after a while. Why? Because um, the energy is going to get wasted in form of sound and heat and whatnot. Uh, but because light cr uh, sort of creates its own propulsion, light can go on forever. And we can know this because light has been traveling for what, 14 billion years uh, from like galaxies really, really far away. And yeah, so light is self propagating, meaning it can go on forever. Uh, the, reason why, uh, the reason why mechanical waves are not self propagating is because one, you need some sort of energy to uh, you need some sort of energy for the wave to travel across the medium, right? So if you have water or a slinky, right, you need energy to push the energy through some sort of medium. And eventually, uh, the energy is going to die out. Like a wave, it's not going to go on forever. Eventually, it's going to die out. But unlike waves, or sorry, unlike electromagnetic waves, which don't need a medium, they can just go on forever. Um, yeah. So he proposed that the electric field and the magnetic field, because they're um, Orthogonal, orthog orthogonal. I have no idea if that's how you say it, but essentially that's just a fancy word to say perpendicular. Um, yeah. So because the magnetic field and electric field is perpendicular, um, they can sort of induce one another. So we have the electric field creating magnetic field, magnetic field creating electric field, and so on and so forth forever. Um, Cool. So this diagram is actually quite important, and this is something that should go on your cheat sheet. Um, yeah. So the second thing to keep in mind about light waves or electronic waves, uh, electromagnetic waves, is that these are transverse waves. Oh, that's not useful. Transverse. Oh, these are transverse waves. The reason we call it transverse is because the light is traveling in this direction. And the particles, well, it's not really particles, but 
the energy uh, not the, yeah the energy is sort of uh, propagating perpendicularly to the direction of travel. So uh, light is traveling in this direction, and the energy is going perpendicularly to the direction of travel. And because um, it's perpendicular, we call this a transverse wave. Cool. So if light is a wave, right, and we're going back to this equation before, like uh, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, right? So if light is a wave, then surely we can apply this same formula to light. And that's the thing, we can do it. And we get this formula, which is c is equal to frequency times wavelength, which is the exact same formula. Uh, it's just that velocity has been swapped out for the speed of light. So if you ever see c, that's basically the speed of light, um, speed of light, uh, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So essentially, this formula is saying um, 3 times 10 to the 8 is equal to frequency times wavelength. Again, same formula, it's just the velocity has been swapped out for the speed of light. Um, yeah, so the next thing we have to keep in mind is that the speed of light is always constant. Um, speed of light is always constant. So uh, velocity is equal to frequency, sorry, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. If velocity is constant, and let's say we were to increase frequency, if we were to increase the frequency, what is going to happen to the wavelength? Well, the wavelength is going to decrease. And vice versa, if we were to increase the wavelength, the frequency will decrease because uh, frequency times wavelength has to be constant, and that constant is the speed of light. And so applying that same logic to this. So this is our electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, you don't have to memorize this by heart because again, you have a cheat sheet. This is something that has to go on your cheat sheet. Um, so you can apply the same sort of logic. Uh, so we know velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, and we know velocity is constant. So uh, for radio waves, so radio waves have the longest wavelength. So uh, yeah, radio waves have the longest wavelength. So if we, uh, if radio waves have the longest uh, longest wavelength, they're going to have the shortest frequency. So Longest, longest wavelength, shortest frequency. Why? Because these two, the frequency and uh, wavelength, is inversely proportional. If you increase one, the other one has to decrease. So similarly, if you go to the other side, if you go to the gamma rays, the gamma rays have one of the shortest, uh, one of the shortest, fre uh, not frequencies, one of the shortest wavelengths. And because the wavelength of the gamma ray is very, very small, the frequency of the gamma ray is very, very high. And this is why um, like this stuff, like the gamma rays and the um, X-rays and the ultraviolet rays, these are very dangerous because they have a shorter wavelength. And a shorter wavelength means that, a uh, shorter wavelength means that the frequency is going to be much, much higher. On the other hand, uh, all these radio waves, microwaves and whatnot, because they have such a long frequency, uh, yeah, some of these some of these radio waves can have like 100, 200 meters of frequent uh, wavelength, and because it's so big, the frequency is a lot lower. And because the frequency is a lot lower, um, the energy of the light, so the light energy is, uh, the, so the energy is a lot lower, and that's why you, like you, that's why you don't get harmed um, harmed by radio waves. But if you were exposed to gamma rays, uh, you're not going to live for very long. And so just a quick question to consolidate this idea. Uh, what is the frequency of visible light which has a wavelength of 650 nanometers? And when it comes to this sort of questions with uh, frequencies, wavelength, uh, the most common unit that's given to us is nanometers. Uh, nanometers, is to, nanometers is 10 to the negative 9. And if you don't know what, uh, if you often get confused between what uh, what each sort of unit is. On the bo bottom of your cheat sheet, there is this section of metric multipliers. And then what it tells us is, tells us like what well, pico is 10 to the 12, nano is 10 to the 9, mega is 10 to the 6. 
So if let's say you've like completely forgotten what a nanometer is, you can go to this page, the last page of your formula sheet. I can go to nanometers and say, oh, nanometer is 10 to the ninth, or 10 to the negative ninth. And so um, obviously you want to convert all your units into SI. So uh, the frequency, which has a wavelength of 650 nanometers, that is basically 650 times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, we also know that velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. But the velocity of light is always constant, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. The frequency is, oh, sorry, the, the wavelength is 650 times 10 to the 650 times 10 to the negative 9 times the, uh, times the frequency. And that gives you a final answer of frequency is equal to 462 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And if you really want to be fancy, that's, uh, that is equivalent to 462 uh, terahertz, which is THZ. You don't need to know this, it's just like a little fancy FYI. Um, yeah, this more than more than enough. Yeah, hopefully I've done the calculation correctly. So if anyone wants to double check that, oh uh, yeah, feel free. Cool. So, so here's the thing, right? So Maxwell he proposed this um, proposed this idea that light is actually a wave, and then what he did, uh, assuming that light is a wave, we can apply these uh, apply these um, waves. But the thing is, uh, there wasn't there wasn't any conclusive evidence that light is a wave. It was uh, mainly just just theory at this point. And so what?